Hello everybody and welcome to Igneous Petrology Series Lesson 6. So in this lesson we're going to be talking about binary eutectic phase diagrams. So to start off with some terminology, a eutectic point is an invariant point. If you think back to Gibbs phase rule, it means that we have defined pressure and temperature. So we have our defined intensive variables. So it's an invariant point in a system that represents the lowest melting point. It also represents a fixed mixture of substances that melt or solidify at a temperature that is lower than the melting points of the individual phases. The temperature it occurs at is known as the eutectic temperature. Um, the rock that will crystallize from this would be a eutectic mixture, okay, so you can get a eutectic liquid or a eutectic solid, okay, that's essentially the product of crystallization occurring at this point. So now I'm going to introduce you to two different types of reactions. So we've been looking at these in the previous lessons but I haven't highlighted it. So a continuous reaction represents a univariant reaction where the phases involved vary in composition. So if you think back to the solid solution, the reaction we had there was continuous, okay, because it happened over a range of conditions, over a range of compositions. A discontinuous reaction is an invariant reaction, such as one that would happen at a eutectic point. This is where phases crystallize at a fixed composition and occur at the same pressure temperature conditions. So there's not much um, change in intensive variables during a discontinuous reaction. So here we're looking at a phase diagram of diopside and a northite. Okay, so as we've learned previously, we have our solid at the bottom here. Anything below this is 100% solid. And here we have two lines, uh, two liquidous lines. Anything above here is entirely liquid. Okay, and just previously as I drop back, so remember when it says here, at a temperature that is lower than melting point of the individual phases. So here we have the melting points here. Yet the eutectic point for both, as you can see, is lower. Okay, so it's just below those two points at the side there. So if we start with a system of this sort of composition, so looking at maybe around 70, 75% diopside, we're going to cool the system and we're going to drop it onto the liquidus. At the liquidus, during equilibrium crystallization, we're going to generate our liquid and our solid component, in this case diopside, and we're going to revolve down the system. If I just pause it there, let's apply our lever principle, so we draw the lines down, see where they intersect, apply the lever rule equation, so it looks like right there we have 37% solid, represented by this arm over here, and 63% liquid, represented by this arm here. So let's continue to evolve that system and we're going to get here. So now our liquid has reached what's known as the eutectic point in this phase diagram at 1274 degrees Celsius. At the eutectic point, we're going to crystallize a eutectic mixture of a northite and diopside, which in this phase diagram would be around 42% diopside and 58% a northite. This will occur at the eutectic temperature, which is 1274 degrees, until all the liquid is consumed. Once all the liquid is consumed during this reaction, so the reaction would be liquid equals a northite plus diopside, and the system will continue to evolve under equilibrium conditions. During equilibrium melting, it's essentially the exact same in reverse, but it's easier to demonstrate visually. So say we have a rock of sort of this composition, we're going to heat it until it hits the solidus. And when it hits the solidus, it's going to begin to melt. Where it's going to begin to melt is at the eutectic point. So at the eutectic point, we're going to melt a eutectic mixture of a northite and diopside. So now we're going to melt 42% diopside and 58% a northite, irrespective of where the entire system lies. For example, if the green diamond lies here, we're still going to melt a eutectic mixture. Same as over here. If our green diamond sits here, we're still going to melt a eutectic mixture. Because we're the right-hand side of the diagram, this side in the diopside field, we're going to stay at this eutectic point till the entire anorthite component has melted away. Vice versa, if we were sitting over here, we would melt all the dark side away and the system would evolve this way. So let's continue with this example. So as all the anorthites removed, the system is going to evolve back up and then we're going to have entirely liquid again. So incremental fractional crystallization, we talked previously about incremental and pure fractional crystallization. So envisage a system of this composition, we're going to cool it, it's going to hit the liquidus, we're going to crystallize our first diopside and have our liquid as well. They're going to continue to evolve down the system. We can apply our lever principle there again if we want. But what I'd like to highlight is this is the point where we're going to remove all that crystallized diopside. 
when we remove all that dark side, we're left with a liquid of around 54% dark side and 46% anorthite. So now with the removal of all those solids, our system's going to begin again at this point. And then we continue to cool it and we hit the eutectic point. So what happens if we get rid of every single dark side we've crystallized up until this point? Well, what would happen then? We're still crystallizing a eutectic mixture of both of these phases, 42% dark side, 58% anorthite. The system will shift onto the eutectic point and then it will eventually cool and we'll be left with a rock of 42% dark side and 58% anorthite. Okay, what about pure fractional crystallization? So what that means is that the second a crystal is formed, it is removed from the system. So say we start with a liquid at this point, we cool it, we hit our liquidus, and we begin to crystallize our first dark side. But that dark side is removed straight away. So really we're monitoring the evolution of the liquid. And it's probably going to look something like this. We're going to get to our eutectic point, and we're going to end with a eutectic mixture. Let's look at an example of fractional melting. Now this is not something we've looked at before, but if we envisage a system that's at this point, heat it up, it's going to hit the solidus, and we're going to start melting a eutectic mixture at the eutectic point. So 43% dark side, 57% anorthite, something like that. Okay. And we're going to continue to melt at this point until all the anorthite is consumed, because we're on the diopside side of the eutectic point. What if once we remove all that anorthite, that we remove that melt from the system? Well, that's going to generate a rock of eutectic mixture. But what about our original system? Our original system is now essentially 100% diopside, right? So we're going to shift it over to the right hand side of the diagram and that is going to stay solid until it reaches 1553 degrees where the diopside will begin to melt. Because if you remember from our definition at the start, the eutectic point is a melting point lower than the constituents within that phase diagram. So actually the diopside is going to stay solid all the way up this because we no longer have an anorthite component to drive the system this way. Okay. So no more melting will take place, because now there is no Northlight component. So, thank you for listening. If you found this helpful, please stay in the loop by clicking subscribe. Any questions, drop them in the comment box below.